Nigeria's inflation surged to 25.80% in the month of August 2023, 1.72% higher than the 24.08% recorded in the previous months. But well, this is according to the recently released Consumer Price Index report for August 2023 by the National Bureau of Statistics. The significant increase reflects the impact of the removal of petrol subsidies and the devaluation of the official exchange rate on consumer prices. Month-on-month -month inflation rose to 3.18% in the review month from 2.89% recorded in the prior month. Also, the Debt Management Office says Nigeria's total public debt increased to 87.38 trillion naira for the second quarter from 49.85 trillion naira in the first quarter. This reflects a 75% growth compared to the first quarter and a 103.92% growth compared to the second quarter of last year, when debt stocks stood at 49.85 trillion naira and 42.85 trillion naira, respectively. And while investment income has grown the pension fund's asset within the year, the number of retirement savings account RSA holders grew marginally. We will keep our eyes on the nation's economy on the show today. Welcome to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonye. Welcome back here is a roundup of some major headlines in business world. We'll start off with new developments in the nation's economy, with the Nigeria's Fed C. Russell rate taking a, a knock despite bullish market sentiment. While Nigeria's domestic bulls celebrate high capitalization levels, foreign investors have continued to decry their inability to liquidate and repatriate their incomes from the assets held in the country. These concerns were echoed in the latest FITSE Russell watch list status report. Now, FITSE Russell announced on September the 8th that Nigeria's FITSE equity country classification status would be downgraded from frontier to unclassified market status, effective from market opening today. The report suggests that the Nigerian index constituents have been depleted from several FITSE Russell equity. Despite being dominated by local participants, the downgrade affected domestic market performance on the full trade and day of the week as we as well as all but one local index registered notably sell pressures while yet to date returns tumbled from 32.96 percent on Friday last week to 31.31 percent on Monday. We'll move on now to NNPC's announcement. The Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited has announced new management appointments to reposition the company's operations. Mrs. Orisha Mewa Eyeson will serve as Executive Vice President of Upstream NNPC Limited, while Mr. Olali Kogunleya is the new Executive Vice President of Gas Power and New Energy. NNPC Limited and Mr. Adetak Shego, the Executive Vice President Downstream NNPC Limited. According to the Chief Corporate Communications Officer of the NNPCL, Garbar Din Mohammed, uh, this aligned with the company's commitment and drive for organizational renewal. It is anchored on its business imperatives, standards of excellence, people development, and strengthening the competencies and capabilities through broad based leadership exposure. We'll move on next to oil matters, uh, looking at oil prices nation, uh, worldwide, that is. In, anal in analyzing the dynamics of the global crude markets today, using data from oil price, it has been observed that Brent crude remains steadfast at $94.30 per barrel. During the preceding weekend, Brent experienced fluctuations within the range of $93 to $94 per barrel, illustrating a subtle market shift. Concurrently, the West Texas Intermediate maintained a strong position above $90 per barrel, registering $91.28 early on Monday morning, underscoring stability in the market. The recent surge in crude oil prices can be attributed to mounting concerns regarding the potential deficits in oil supply. And finally, in business roundup, looking at debt management and Lagos state being the highest, the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics has confirmed that Nigeria's public debt grew at a rate of 75.27% on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. However, on a state-by-state -state level, Jigawa State recorded the lowest domestic debt with 43.13 billion naira, followed by Kebi State with 60 naira or 60.94 billion naira. Lagos State recorded the highest external debt with 1.26 billion dollars, followed by Kaduna with 56. 
of 569.38 million US dollars. Bruno State had the least external debt with 18.75 million dollars, followed by Taraba with 21.92 million dollars. And that's business roundup. I'll take a quick break and return with more discussion. Stay with me.